Hello, it's so good to have you here, to be here with you. I'm Tammy Gowen, High Sensory Coach. And today I want to talk about how we can work through our emotions and our energy using a technique called tapping or EFT or sometimes EFT tapping. So as highly sensing people, and I do use that term quite frequently, actually, you'll hear me say highly sensitive, but you'll also hear me say highly sensing. I find that in our culture today, sensitivity or sensitive tends to have that negative connotation. And sometimes people hear that word and think, oh, okay, that's something that just needs to be fixed or taken care of. And it's something that, you know, that's just kind of negative or, you know, not something to learn more about. So when I use the term sensing, highly sensing, people are more likely to say, oh, well, what do you mean? What is that about? And then we open a conversation. So I often use that. Uh, and I think it makes sense because we it is all about being, you know, a sensory being and all the sensory input that we have coming in. So we are always sensing everything. So highly sensing is my term. So I want to talk about EFT or tapping. And if you are used to tapping and you have some background in that, maybe this will just give you a, just some different ideas and ways to use it as a highly sensing person. And if you're not aware of it at all, it'll give you some background and some understanding of how it works. And then I'll take you through a couple of different ways to use it to help with our energy and our emotions so that you'll have some, some tools in your toolbox. And in general, I mean, I am going to give you this, these tools so that you can do this on your own. And there's a lot of, you know, a lot of ways that you can use tapping yourself and you can search anywhere on the internet. You can just search, you know, whatever your topic is and tapping, and you'll find a video for doing that. Uh, and just, just to be aware, it's, it's super helpful for anything that you want to do yourself. And a lot of times I will work with people specifically on tapping, we'll get kind of a, a base going, and then they'll just move off on their own and continue to practice, you know, similar things. And there's a lot of things you can do for your, your sensory awareness and your, uh, you know, releasing the things that you're dealing with. But as a note, just to know if, if you do start using tapping on your own and you feel like you're kind of stuck or things aren't moving as much as you would like, it really can be effective to work with a guide because they can see something that you might not be able to recognize or make connections that you don't see and be able to draw in things that you wouldn't think to do yourself. And you can really go a lot deeper and a lot of times really move some stuff. Um, it's, it can be a really amazing technique. I use it with the majority of my, my coaching clients because it can just be so powerful to be able to release all those things that are stuck in our unconscious, our old beliefs, things that we've been told for so long, things that we don't even recognize that we think or believe that are in the way. And it's just a really nice way to, a non-invasive way to be able to work through all of that in a very short amount of time without having to revisit or even necessarily be aware of, you know, past traumas or specific experiences. It's just a, a really helpful technique. So what is EFT or tapping? It is emotional freedom techniques. So EFT, much shorter. Most people know it as, as tapping. And so where does that come from? Uh, I'll explain the actual process in a moment, but it really is a, a technique that was developed by a man named Gary Craig, but looking back at several other people's work and the experiences between that and his own, and then he created this idea of EFT or tapping. So the idea though is based on that the fact that everything is energy. Our physical bodies are energy and in our environment, but even our emotions, our thoughts, and everything that it gets programmed into our system is also energy. It has a certain frequency and it can be locked up in that system. So when we're doing something like EFT, it's sort of like having acupuncture. So if you've ever done that, where you're addressing all the meridian points and lines in your body, EFT does the same thing. And actually, if you do a full protocol of EFT, you're going to hit at least one point on all of those meridians so that you're really addressing that energy system. And then we pair it with specific thoughts or ideas or even physical pain, whatever it is that we're, you know, we're experiencing. We pair those together and then our bodies just naturally open up those blockages and allow that information to move through by reprogramming it basically by saying, oh, this was the belief that was here or this is what was popping up, whatever that might be connected to. Now this is the new reality, the new story. And so all of this stuff gets reprocessed, it moves through, and then we have a new understanding and a new way of, of approaching the world. 
So it can be very, very effective. And it is very non-invasive in that you only touch your own body. I mean, it is possible for, for a guide to, you know, with permission to, to help out and actually tap somewhere while a person is doing something else, um, a different spot perhaps, or, um, a, you know, there are a variety of different techniques that you can um, expound on within EFT. Uh, but for the most part, you're doing it yourself. So it can be done, you know, online with a guide, with a coach, with a practitioner. Uh, you can do it just completely on your own. And then I'm going to give you some little techniques about how to use it when you are on your own, but not all by yourself. You can still use it. So it's it's a, a very easy technique to use. It's simple. It's also very, very quick sometimes. I had a client once that said, well, you know, I've tried that in a group situation and I didn't really find it all that helpful. And I said, no, I understand. Um, we don't have to do that. We can give it one try and see what you think. She said, well, when I'm resistant, that's usually when I need to do something. So oh, let's give it a try. And we had just one session and she was blown away by the amount of, that everything just moved. And when we checked in with the initial issue that we were talking about, she had absolutely no emotional, visceral response to it whatsoever at that point. And she couldn't believe that it could happen that quickly. So it's one of the reasons that I just really love the technique. So how it actually happens is in order to address that energy system, we're going to tap on very specific points and those are going to activate those energy lines. And so those, those points are going to be, I mean, you know, it's called tapping for a reason. So we're going to tap on these points, but the reality is that I don't forget to mention this later. If you, for example, you have a headache and you want to tap on your headache, you probably aren't going to be wanting to be, you know, tapping on your head. You're not going to be pounding super hard anyway. We don't have to use a lot of pressure for tapping. But, you know, if you have a headache, you're probably not going to want to be doing that. Um, or if you're in a place where you know people can see what you're doing, but you still want to tap. It's nice to know that for one, you can just touch a point. Um, you can massage the point. Or you can just imagine, have your intention go there as if you were tapping and it could still be really impactful. So if you are in a busy situation or you're at your desk and you know people can see you, you just maybe close your eyes if, if that would be okay or just kind of you know stare off at a point and just imagine that you are tapping through those points, it will still be very helpful. So lots of different ways that you can do that. Typically we, we just, we do the tapping and and go go from there. So the main points that we're going to be using are the top of the head, and we have the the little points, the eyebrow points, right on the corners of your eyebrows, and then the corners of your eyes, not back on the temple, but actually right at the corners. Then we have underneath your eyes, about where your pup uh, your uh, pupil pupils will be, and then you have under the nose, under the lips, and then if you go to the the bony part right here and slide down just slightly, you have a little uh, depression there. Um, you can tap right in here. And then the next main point we're gonna be using is gonna be underneath your armpits, um, a, about a hand width, um, or ladies, wherever your bra strap line would be, uh, just right in there. And you can do, uh, I didn't mention this before, you can do one, just one side, one hand, you can cross sides if you want, you can do both hands. Sometimes people think it's more, more effective if you do both. Some, you know, originally it started with just one, whatever feels comfortable for you. And I had a shoulder injury for a little while and I got used to doing just one side. So sometimes I kind of default to that, even though I used to do two. So you might see me do both. But um, so if you do under the arms, you can do both. Some people like to do chicken wing uh, just, just so you can access that or you can just do one, however that works for you. And then in order to address uh, the rest of the meridians. Everything runs through our wrist into our hands and we have a lot of points here on our hands. So if you address the, uh, the line across the base of your wrist and just use your other hand to tap this way, or if you prefer, you can tap them both together this way. I like this one, it's a little, little easier, but whatever works for you. And those are gonna be the main points that we're gonna do so that we just get a little bit of everything. There are um, other points, like if you're really focused on anger, a uh, point that's really good is right underneath the chest here. That's a, um, a a point, a liver point in your system that's really good for anger. We're not going to incorpor incorporate that one today. It's a little harder to see on on video, uh, and not necessarily, you know, it's not necessary, but it's one of those things that you can add. 
And then one thing just to be aware of, if you are doing this on your own, uh, and of course, if you're working with a guide, though, they will be aware of this, or you can say it to them and they can help you with this. But as you go through, if you if you get to a certain point and you recognize that something's shifting, something is happening, maybe you become teary, maybe your breathing changes, whatever it is, you recognize, oh, something's happening here. It's a good idea to just kind of stay there. And so, you know, say you're doing this and suddenly you feel this big welling of emotion or something happens, just stay there and breathe through that and just allow that to be there for a little while and give it a little bit more space, a little bit more time. And then as you start to to feel ready, then just carry on and, and move the rest of the way. So those are the main points. And the idea is that we we allow our our systems to be aware that we're that we're aware of of this issue of whatever it is that's going on. We become aware of that, we acknowledge it, and then we give permission for letting that go. And then we're going to kind of set in an, a new perspective. So one thing that people do comment on sometimes is we have a, something called a setup statement. And so the other point that we use at the very beginning is the side of the hand, which they call the karate chop point. And you can do that with one hand or you can do both at the same time, whatever works for you. And when we have this setup statement, we're, we're saying, okay, this is what the issue is. This is how it's troubling, et cetera. And sometimes people will have a problem with that saying, hey, I don't, I don't want to reinforce what I don't want uh, or what, what's not working. So just so that you recognize the idea is not that we're going to be reinforcing it. And, and as we go through the, the first part of a series is going to be focusing on that stuff that's not working so that we really bring up everything that's happening. And even then, sometimes we really make these connections and have those aha moments of, oh, this is where this comes from. No wonder. Or just giving ourselves that validation for, yeah, I've been experiencing this for a while and it's really challenging. So we will be focusing on those things initially so that we can acknowledge it, be aware, open it up, give our systems that that sense that, okay, I, I know what's going on and then, then I'm going to give permission for that to move out and look different. So as we do start that, if that's an inclination for you to say, mm, I don't want to be saying something that's going to reinforce what I don't want. Just be aware that that's, that's the way it is um, designed to be able to uh, acknowledge it first so then it can move out, but we're not gonna be setting that in. It's already, it's already there, right? So what we're doing is we're gonna acknowledge it and then let it move out. So no worries on that. And then as we go through and we, we give that permission, we open that up, things start to shift, and then we kind of set in that, that new phase. Now, if you're doing it on your own, as we go through, so it's kind of like these three parts, as, as you go through from one to the next to the next, if there's at any point where you think, well, I think I need to be you know, moving on to the next, next set or, or sequence, but it doesn't feel like anything has moved, then you can give it a little bit longer. Don't just say, okay, I'm going to do this three times and then automatically move into the you know, permission phase or whatever. Uh, if, if it doesn't feel like anything is ready to move or something's nagging at you, give it a little bit longer, maybe do another round. And then if you say, well, I don't know, I'll move into this, this next section and you do that and still it just doesn't feel like anything's moving. Then what you can do is go back to the setup statement, which will make sense in a minute. Um, we're going to start with even though, so that's the setup statement. So if things are just not moving, then, uh, you know, of course, ultimately you can seek someone out and say, hey, I, this isn't working for me. I need, I need some guidance on this. But if you're working on it yourself, and you just want to create some more sh more shift, you can look at the setup statement that you were using and shift that a little bit. So maybe you have some little awareness that, oh, maybe I need to focus on this a little bit more, or maybe use this wording instead. And you can change that up a little bit and then go from there. And that usually helps to create that momentum and actually help that to shift. So for our example today and how to use this for our, our emotions, um, I'm just going to use the term overwhelm because if you're highly sensing, you know what that's all about. You know what it feels like to be overwhelmed and you probably experience it more often than you would like. Even if you have lots of tools, it still comes up. I mean, thankfully, at this point, I experience that feeling of overwhelm very rarely because of all my tools, but I still definitely have those days, especially when it's about, you know, everything else in the world or 
some real specific, you know, acute issue that I'm dealing with, sometimes I can definitely still get that overwhelmed place. So everyone probably knows what that's like. So we're going to just work on that. And that could be different for everybody in terms of what you feel in your body with that. But we'll just work on that idea of overwhelm. So whatever that is for you, whatever you're feeling in the moment for that. And so when we're doing the tapping, it's a, it's a good idea to find out where we start so that we know how our progress is. So if we're saying, okay, I'm going to say, I, you know, my setup statement is going to be, even though I'm feeling really overwhelmed right now. And if you're not particularly right now, you can say, even though I tend to experience overwhelm, you know, more often than I want, or whatever feels, you know, true to you right now that has to do with overwhelm, that's your st setup statement. And we're going to add a little bit to that, but we're going to always come back to making sure that that feels accurate, that that's still the issue. And we want to see where that kind of starts. So on a zero to 10 scale, where zero is not, not a problem, and 10 is, I can't imagine being any more overwhelmed than I am right now. Then you would start by saying, okay, where am I at on that scale right now? So uh, assuming that you're experiencing some amount of overwhelm right now, perhaps you're at maybe a six or a seven, maybe you're really overwhelmed right now and feeling a, an eight, a nine, maybe even a 10. And you'll, you'll just identify that so that you know later when you can check, um, when you will check, you'll be able to, to see when that's moved. Uh, if you started at a seven and you say, okay, how am I feeling about that right now? Oh, about a four. Then you know there's been some movement. So that just helps us. And I often forget that even when I'm working with clients, but uh, it's a good way to, it's a gauge to to know, uh, you know how, how it's working and if anything needs to be shifted. And then the other thing that you want to do is check in with your body and say, okay, so overwhelm. Like I said, that's very different for everyone. Where do you feel that sense of overwhelm in your body? So if you just take a moment, whatever level, even if you're only like at a two right now and you're just not overwhelmed and you haven't had that experience recently, just, you know, pick a time when the last time that you did feel overwhelmed, when you think of overwhelmed, where is that in your body and what does it feel like? Is it a heaviness in your chest? Is it a clenching in your gut? You know, is your jaw tight? Whatever you're experiencing in your body, be aware of that. And then you know, spend a little bit of time saying, and what is that like? Oh, like I'm feeling it in my gut. What is that, that feeling? Okay. It feels kind of squirrely. It feels, you know, staticky, or it feels really heavy and dense. So really identify what that is that you're experiencing. And just be aware that as we get started, that might actually increase slightly because you're paying attention and you're giving voice to your body saying, oh, okay. Yeah. This is what I'm experiencing. And and now I have the space to, to really go there, but know that that will move, that will move out. So once we've got those, take a little sip. We're ready to, to start our, our, um, our little scenario here. And we're going to start with that, even though I'm, I'm just going to be pretty generic, even though I'm feeling overwhelmed right now. And then we're going to, I'm going to say that three times with a little twist on each one is the way I usually do it. And then what you do as a participant is you listen to what I say, and then I have a pause. And then while I'm pausing, you're going to say the same thing that I just said, as long as it resonates. So if I say something and you just feel like, mm, that's not true for me, then in your head, or if you're in a place where you can say it out loud, it's usually a little more effective or you really get into it you know, more and go deeper if you can say it out loud. So if you're totally by yourself and you can do this, great, say it out loud. If you can't, just say it in your head. And if it's not quite resonant with you know, what I just said is not resonant with you, just adjust whatever the, the right word is for you. Because again, I'm doing this generically you know, to try to fit it for everyone. So just make it pertinent for you and your situation, your experience. So as we do that each time, you just, you hear what I say, and then you repeat it. You hear what I say and you repeat it. And these are just, this is just a guide. Uh, so yeah, just adjust as necessary. And you probably wanna have uh, some water near you because you might, you might get thirsty. I get very thirsty when I um, do tapping. And you might have all kinds of different responses as we go. You might feel thirsty. You might start yawning. You might get some tears. 
you might burp, you might get fidgety. There, you know, a lot of stuff can happen when we're releasing energy. And that's all that is, is that your body, your system releasing that energy. So whatever that is, that's not maybe not typical for you, or you thought, well, I don't feel tired, but I'm yawning all of a sudden. It's all just part of that release of the energy. So not to worry. And you might also want to have, you know, some, some tissues because sometimes we do have some tears. Sometimes that's a realization of what something came from. Sometimes it's just a matter of that energy flowing just creates tears. Whenever I meditate, I always end up with a little, little teariness in my eyes. Um, just, just as a matter of, of course, just, um, just that energy moving, I think. So, okay. I think we are ready to start and we're going to focus on, uh, like I said, just uh, overwhelm. So on this karate chop point, and again, you can do one hand or two, and then just follow along with what I say. Even though I'm experiencing some overwhelm right now, I love and accept myself anyway. Even though I'm overwhelmed and I don't like this feeling, I love and accept myself deeply and completely. Even though I'm overwhelmed and I really don't like this feeling at all, and it really gets in my way, I acknowledge how I feel and I'm ready to let this go. Oh, this overwhelm. Sometimes it can be really intense. I just don't know what to do with this overwhelm. My body gets all tight. I just feel like shutting down. I have things I'm looking forward to and then suddenly I can't do it. I just feel overwhelmed and nothing else feels good. I feel it in my body. I feel it in my energy system. I know other people can tell when I'm overwhelmed. I know that when I'm feeling this way, I'm not my true self and the self I want to be. I'm so tired of feeling overwhelmed. I just wish I was able to deal with things the way it seems like everyone else does. Things just get to be so much for me. With my sensitivity, things are just huge. They're so important. And that can leave me feeling like this, just overwhelmed. I'm tired of feeling this way. I'm, I'm sure it's a lot better to not be this way. I just can't see my way, way out sometimes. Life would be so much easier if I was just at peace. I don't know why I have to be this overwhelmed all the time. I'm really tired of it. What if there was a way that I could handle everything in life without this overwhelm? What if I could calm my body and manage all of the input? I'm sure there's a way that I can manage all of this emotion without it affecting my body so much? What if I could have this level of anxiety and overwhelm just move out of my body right now? I know that this doesn't help me. I also know it makes sense Because of my sensitivity, all of this stuff is just flooding me all the time. 
So it makes sense that I get this level of overwhelm. But I don't like it and I don't want it. What if there was a way for me to manage my emotions without getting to the point of overwhelm? What if I could just calm myself and not take everything so much to heart? I realize that if I'm not overwhelmed, it doesn't mean I don't care. I can be compassionate and understanding and empathetic without being overwhelmed. And I can manage things that are coming in without getting overloaded. I know there's a way. And I know I can release this overwhelm from my body, from my system. I'm sure that this is possible to not be overwhelmed. I give permission to let go of this overwhelm. I give permission to release any emotions that I have right now that are leading me to feel this way. I don't have to have any answers. I can just be with myself. I can choose to acknowledge and release any feelings that I have. I can acknowledge this overwhelm and anxiety. I can acknowledge any other feelings I might be having. Give them permission to be here. And then release them. I don't have to hold on to them. And whatever is happening out there in the world, or in my family or my relationships, I don't have to hold on to that either. I give permission for my system to let go of all of my emotions, anything that I'm holding. I give myself permission to be at peace. I acknowledge that I can be who I want to be. My compassionate, empathetic self without feeling any overwhelm. And I give myself permission right now to release any level of tension and anxiety and overwhelm that I have. I give myself permission to just be me, regardless of what's happening outside. I give myself permission to feel fully at peace, to release anything that's in my way and not hold on to it. I can feel my body releasing and relaxing. It feels so much better to be at peace and relaxed. And it's totally okay that I feel that way. I feel my body release. I feel a sense of openness and flow. No more tension, tightness.
I let my body completely relax now. There's no reason to hold on to anything. What happens outside of me, for the most part, I can't control and I don't have to. I choose to be able to manage everything while feeling at peace. No matter what's happening, I can feel at peace. I feel my body in this relaxed state. With every breath, I release anything else that's blocking me. I release anything and everything that's in my way of complete relaxation and peace. I let go of any emotion that's holding me back. I allow myself to let go. I embrace the world knowing that I don't have to be overwhelmed at all. I release everything and choose peace. Okay, so you might, like me, want to get a little water. Take a nice couple deep breaths. And then now see how your body is feeling. Where were you feeling that overwhelm before? Has that shifted in intensity or quality or location? Sometimes things kind of shift and move and lighten up or just feel different. And then if you remember your number before, you can compare now with what is your level of uh, in, you know, intensity of that overwhelm right now and see how that might have shifted. And this was just one short um, you know, example of, of using the tapping, but probably most people end up, you know, feeling some kind of shift. Sometimes it's pretty profound. Sometimes it's, well, I can tell that's moving, but I could do, do some more of that and maybe even make it more pertinent, more specific uh, to your situation. But that's, that's a way to, to use it for that specific um, issue. You can use it for any emotion you want. You can use it for physical pain. You can use it for um, a thought that just keeps coming that you're not letting go of or a situation, uh, whatever it is that's a habit, anything that's troubling you, you can use the tapping for. So before we run out of time, I would like to give you one um, one other little way that you can use this without going into such, such detail or depth with you know identifying something in particular and doing the setup statement. Uh, sometimes just to self-soothe, which we often need as highly sensing people, or just to you know take the edge off of that sense of anxiety or uh, physical tension that you're having in your body, or just being able to prepare yourself um, going forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I have a client who used to um, or does started uh, when she would go to work. Uh, it was not a, a real pleasant environment, so she would tap on the way to work of course she was focused on what she was doing and she was driving but she would just kind of tap through what i'm going to uh, teach you now and then on the way back from work she would do that before walking into her house to just kind of reset everything so without having to do the whole setup and and figure out you know all of the you know am i ready to move on to the the permission section and then the the instilling the new stuff just focus specifically on what it is that you want to feel and the fact that you are choosing to relax your body. So if you've got all that tension, we're just going to be aware of that, uh, but just kind of start. So like we skipped the first two sections and we're just now going to start on that self-soothing piece. 
So then, you know, again, before, uh, before, if, if you can do this out loud, great. If you're in a place where you can't just imagine or, you know, excuse yourself and move to the bathroom, you can do this in just a couple minutes. Uh, and you would just start with uh, like some of that we were doing before. So we're just focusing on what we want our body to feel and kind of encouraging that to happen. So we're not even going to necessarily identify that we're tense or, or stressed or overwhelmed or, um, you know, your jaw is tight or whatever. We're just going to focus on where we want to be going. So we would do something like, I feel my body releasing as I tap. I really prefer to feel relaxed and I give myself permission to do that now. With every exhalation, I release anything that's in my way. I feel the tension leaving my body every exhale. I allow my body to let go and be relaxed. I have the power and control to release my body from any tension. I feel it releasing, I feel it relaxing. I much prefer to feel relaxed. I choose that now. There's no reason to hold on to this tension. I let it go. I release anything and everything in my way of feeling totally at peace. No matter what's happening around me, I choose to feel relaxed. I release all remaining attention. I release anything that doesn't feel relaxed. I allow myself to feel at peace. My body's really relaxing now. I feel it letting go and I surrender to that. It feels so good to let go, to just be relaxed. I choose this state of being at peace. Okay, so that's one that's just really quick. You can just, again, use it self-soothing, just releasing that tension, feeling better as you're getting ready for something. Maybe you've got a big meeting coming up and you're, you're all on edge. Just a way to let things calm down. Maybe you're gonna be meeting with someone that there's usually a little friction. You can do that before the meeting and then help yourself afterwards to just bring yourself back to that place of feeling calm and relaxed. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that this has given you a, an extra couple tools to put in your box, to self-soothe, to take care of yourself. It's a great practice to do every day. Just pick something that you wanna tap on and do that. Uh, and something as a go-to when you start to feel something that you don't want to feel anymore um, or something that you can't get out of your head, you can use this for that. Just use it anytime at all. And please do reach out if you have any questions, if you want to pursue understanding anything more about this or even working with someone like myself, uh, feel free to reach out. All of my information and all kinds of resources are available on Linktree with just my name. So L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E -E slash Tammy, T-A-M-M-Y, go and G-O-E-N. Have a really fabulous rest of your day.